Welcome back to another episode of Believe in the Broncos on the Believe Network, sponsored by Bet Online. I'm Patrick Kiyote. I'm one of your two hosts of this program. Joining me, as always, is former Denver Bronco, Super Bowl 50 champion, Chris Harris Jr. Chris, always good to see you, man. How you doing? Doing good, man. It's training camp time, you know. Guys' lives are gone and straight football now. So hey, this is the time I used to hate, but I hate it's a it's like a hate love time period, you yeah. know, because you love playing football, but nobody wants to work nine to nine, you know. So oh. it's that time of year. Training camp is here, summer is over for the NFL guys. It's time to get back to work. Broncos camp is officially underway. This is the best time of the year for us fans, Chris. Um, you know, like you said, not the best time for the players, but this is time to get back to work and we get to see who is going to be on this 53 man roster for the Denver Broncos. This is another episode of our roster breakdown series. Last episode, we did the quarterback room and Chris, this is the last episode and it's the one that we've been putting off the most. This is the tight ends and special teams episode. Uh, it, it's still a good one, so stick around. We're going to be talking about the possibility of this being the worst group, and we're talking about the tight ends, the worst group on the roster uh, as far as talent goes. Uh, guys like Adam Troutman, you know, Lucas Kroll is coming into just his third NFL season, really. Uh, can Greg Dulcich stay healthy? These are all questions uh, that we're going to answer on this episode. We're also going to be talking about special teams. It's not the sexiest uh, part of football, but for a guy who lived and breathed special teams for a long time, uh, I can say that it gets me very excited to talk about it. And the Broncos were pretty good at it last year. Um, Chris, before we get into that, we have a message from our sponsors. Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything online sports betting. Right now, you can receive a 50% free bet of up to $250 on your first deposit to bet on anything from the Olympics to baseball to Formula One racing. I know that I'm going to be putting some money down on the men's basketball team for sure. Bet Online has every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slots games. Head to the website today to get in on the action. Use promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% free bet credit on your first deposit up to $250. Bet online. The game starts here. And Chris, where we're going to start with this dismal tight end group is uh, last season. Not the greatest. We didn't get a ton of production. Adam Troutman only had 22 catches, 204 yards, a career-high three touchdowns, which is great. Uh, he's played in Sean Payton's yeah. system before, and he's really the veteran of this group uh, right now. Uh, so, Chris, what did you see from Adam Troutman last season? You know, they bring him back. Uh, he was a free agent at the end of last season. They bring him back uh, for a short-term deal. What did you see from Troutman last year, and, and do you have confidence in him being – the team's top tight end going into this season? Um, no, I don't have confidence in any of the tight ends. You know, I think I, I do, but I do have confidence in him being a solid run blocker, you know, ser yeah. serviceable receiver, you mm -hmm. know, um, uh, some, you know, Co Coach Payton will be able to draw him up something, you know, in the red zone, be able to get him those touchdowns, you know. Uh, yeah. But that's really what he is, you know. Most teams, you'd probably be your second or third tight end. You know, you run blocking tight end and, uh, and most on most teams, you know. So, yeah, um, him being our top guy returning with only 200 yards receiving, 22 catches, you know, three touchdowns. That shows you uh, where we're at at the tight end position. Um, we're, you know, our main, our kind of wild card guy is Dolchich. And mm -hmm. I can't, I don't know how many games he's played in the NFL. So, you know, um, right now he's <laughs> looking like a, what'd you say? I said it feels like he hasn't played in forever. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, other than his rookie year, I mean, I haven't seen him on the field, you know. So, um, that's the issue that's going on. Um, you got the run guy that's that we expect to be Troutman. We got our wildcat, our, you know, receiving threat tight end, Dolchich, and 
the receiving yeah. threat guy hasn't been available. So we've been stuck with just serviceable run blocking tight ends without having that little wild card threat. Yeah. And, and I mean, last season you had Chris Manhurts come in. He's a, he was a veteran dude, but that was a guy who was going to be a run blocker. Uh, he, he wasn't going to be yeah. anything more than that. You know, he's not a big uh, receiving threat down th- downfield. And I, I feel like the hope last season was that Dulcich was going to improve um, health wise and then he'd be available and, and it just didn't happen. Um, so, you know, you, you're having to rely on Adam Troutman um, and then some of these younger guys, Nate Adkins, it wasn't really the big receiving threat. He was more of a blocking dude. Uh, he, he's kind of like in between a fullback. Uh, he, he reminded me a lot of Andrew Beck, like a less athletic mm-hmm. Andrew Beck is what I would uh, put Nate Adkins as. But uh, and then Lucas Kroll comes along, you know, later in the season and he's got a couple of good games here and there. Um, He actually ended up being one of the better uh, pass catchers on the team. He was sixth in the team in yards per reception, which is pretty crazy, Mm -hmm. but only eight catches on the season. So uh, still some hope there. But this town, like the talent in this room altogether, especially with the head of it being Troutman, it's like if Dulcich isn't there. Uh, and, and he's not ready to go. This is such a big question mark for the Broncos. And I think that this is, you know, it, we try not to look too far into the future, but this is a, an area where I definitely see the Broncos next season saying, all right, we have to get a really good tight end, either in this draft right. class that's going to have several really good tight ends or in free agency. You look at teams like Detroit that drafted you know, Sam Laporta higher than, you know, some people would have liked, but they, they got a guy who could do it all. He can block, he can catch, he runs great routes. Um, That's the kind of guy that they're probably looking for. I just like, I don't see a guy like that on this roster. Currently Dulcich is a great receiver when he's healthy, not the best, not the best inline blocker. He's not going to be a guy that you know, will pick up blitzes very well. Good blocker in space after the catch. Absolutely. Like it, he was a receiver yeah. uh, at UCLA and then he uh, he became a tight end. And you can see he's a really good stock blocker, uh, really good at blocking corners and safeties in space. But outside of that, mm-hmm. there's not much there. So they need to do it all tight end. I just don't see it on this roster. Um, Chris, yeah. out of this group, who do you think is going to be the guy that is going to step up and be a, I mean, not like a superstar type of tight end. I don't, I don't see any of them being that. But like, who do you see stepping up in this group and being a key contributor for this offense? Yeah, if Dolchich can't stay healthy, I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna bet my money on Lucas Crow. Mm. Right, he's still a big body, six six. Um, mm. You know, he he's he's was not, with the Saints, so he has some familiar. Not with quite the, uh, Jimmy Graham. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy's like, um, I don't even know. Is he six seven, six eight? I mean, he's, he's, got, he's got to be pushing six eight, dude. Yeah, yeah, dude. He's tall, but <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, I think Lucas can just you know can continue to build on what he did last year. You know, he got some playing time, got his feet wet a little bit. Um, try to you know, you always want to have a better year. Try to double the numbers of what you had last year. So he had eight catches. You know, his goal should be at least thirty catches. You know, mm. trying to double that. And if we can get, if we can, he's gonna, one of these guys is gonna have to step up because really, I, I'm only counting Dolchich for like six games, I know. right? Until he can prove me wrong or prove me, yeah, yeah prove me wrong, you know. And uh, until then, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to go with Troutman, Crow, and I think Atkins is gonna be like that man hurts role. He's gonna be the block, yeah. extra blocker guy. Usually keep four, right? Yeah. So I see the Broncos keeping those four. Um, Next year should be should be one of the top priorities in the draft. Um, yeah, I would say honestly. that, probably, and then probably, um, you know, depending on what we do with the the end, you know, because we have two guys that's going to be up with that position. So um, those two positions might will be the top priorities. And you got to have a you got what makes a tight end important in the offense is the mismatches, being able mm. to find different matchups across the board. Uh, usually when you can get a smaller DB on them, most smaller DBs struggle with the big body tight ends. You can kind of match them up, find different ways to get them the ball. And we just don't have that option right there, right now. 
And um, we have it with the receivers a little bit. But, you know, you don't have that overwhelming matchup problem like how KC does or what the Raiders are about to have with Bowers, you know. Um, and Meyer. And Meyer. Yeah, they got you know, two. What the Niners have, the mm-hmm. Lions, right? Mm-hmm. You have to have a guy that can to work those middles. And also you can stick him out wide versus a linebacker, you know. Yeah. So um, their uh, tight ends in today's games are, you know, they can – they're kind of like your wildcat guy. Like he can, you put them all over the field, fullback, yeah. tight end, X receiver, Z receiver, slot. Yeah. Like you can, you want a guy that can play all over the field. And we thought Amen. we were going to have that with Noah Fant. And unfortunately, he just didn't, you know, it didn't work out. But we, we still got to find that type of weapon because that's why I, if we didn't get a Bo Nix, my next pick was Bowers, right? Because yeah. that's something I yeah. thought we needed. So yeah. um, that's something next year, hopefully, we can look into for sure. Yeah, definitely. And, and man, shot me in the heart with the Noah Fant. Like that was a dude that I I was so excited for. This was a big dude. Like come coming out of Iowa, like pretty much yeah. if you have a tight end coming out of Iowa, nine times out of ten, he's gonna be a dog. But that one out of ten, Noah Fant. <laughs> like he, yeah. he like he had so much hope. Uh and, and the talent, like the athleticism was there, but I just it didn't work out. And you're absolutely right. Think about, I, I mean, you think about the transformation of this position. Um, and, you know, f- for me being a tight end coach, that was one thing that I really had to lean on was how can I make these matchups uh, for my guys who I like, I see their skills. I know their skills. I, I know what they're good at. Um, and, and I think good coaches understand how to use those guys correctly. Think about how the Patriots played you guys with Gronkowski. I mean, they they would put him out wide and and either, you know, a Danny Trevathan would have to follow him. T.J. Ward would have to follow him. Uh, you know, yeah. you'd have to put a safety on him. That's the, mis- the mismatch that you're looking for. Um, and, and the good ones yeah. always understand how to attack those the best. So I think with – you know, with a guy like Sean Payton, who has been really, really good with using tight ends throughout his career. We think about Jeremy Shockey. We think about Jimmy Graham. Um, you know, J- Jimmy was a, a kind of a unicorn type, not a great blocker. We saw that for sure. But God, he could stretch the field, right? And I think yeah. that's probably the role that they're looking for the most out of guys like Dulcich, Kroll, um, and the undrafted guy that they brought in from Utah, Thomas Yasmin, who has a rugby background. These are guys who will stretch the field. You can play them in the slot a ton. Um, and they understand yeah. how to run routes well. They understand spacing. Um, but you're not going to have to rely on them to block too much. So, Chris, Lucas yeah. Kroll has been getting a ton of praise uh, from the staff this offseason. Um, he, he was a guy that a lot of people saw come around late in the season. 6'6", 260, big body, athletic. Um, If Dulcich can't stay healthy in in six games, I agree with you. That's kind of the limit for for my Dulcich love right now is just six games. Could Lucas Kroll be a a tight end long-term for the Denver Broncos if he finds that role? Could he be like a Julius Thomas type um, where you're not going to rely on him too much for blocking, but, man, he can hit the seam hard? I think um, he's more – he's probably better at blocking mm-hmm. than, than I would say receiving from Lucas Curl, you know, just seeing him and um, seeing how he moves. Sure. Um, can he get open at receiver? Yes, because he's a big body and, you know, he's still solid at route running. But I would see him more of a complete tight end, more of – you know, not just like a receiver threat tight end, yeah. like a Dolce. When I mm-hmm. see Dolce, I'm thinking of like – He's a receiver. You know, I'm counting him yeah. as like an extra yeah. receiver on the field. A he could receiver. be an X. He yeah, an like X I'm not counting that with Lucas yet um, until he shows me he has that, you know, that that quickness, you know what I mean? A different type of mm-hmm. burst and quickness that you find from other tight ends. Uh, right now, he's kind of, you know, that big body tight end, you know, run, run him across the middle, you know, get mm-hmm. him uh, to where he can run those little stops and body – uh, you know, the safety, smaller safeties and things like that, slants and things like that. So um, I see that kind of being his role. He's not yeah. like a guy like Jimmy Graham yet where you're just going to stick him out wide and he's going to moss you. He's not doing no, that. Not yet. Not so, yet. Not yet. Um, it's going to take some, you know, it's going to take some creativity from uh, Sean Payton to get these guys going. But he has to do it, 
right? Somebody, they, they got to figure out a way to find ma- mismatches. And the way teams are doing it now, the work in the middle of the field, the work in the yeah. linebacker, the work in the safeties, they're using the running back in the tight end, right? Yeah. So we got to find ways to get these tight ends open. We can't have, I mean, 300 yards, how many yards total from the tight end position? Yeah, it, it was like, uh, let's see, Troutman had 204, Kroll had 95, and Adkins had 22. Um, I think Manhurts had, yeah, Manhurts only had 16. So, yeah, just over 300. Yeah, like, not that's, great. that's not now, great. if we compared that to other teams, right, that would be dead, dead last in the league, yeah, right? It, so, we, not good. We have to get more production from that position. And mm-hmm. we, uh, I mean, when we won the Super Bowl, it was huge for us because we had, you know, we had some solid tight ends. You know, we always had good tight ends, you know, from yeah. having a guy like Virgil, a guy that was key on special teams, right? Yeah. Which yeah. Lucas will be a good guy on special teams. Trotman mm-hmm. will have to play special teams. Um, Atkins, those, all those guys have to play special teams, especially on this team because you're not getting 50 catches, right? No. So, you know, no. all I expect all four of those guys to play special teams. They all have to have a role, and um, because their role, they're not going to be the receiver type, you know, no. guy that's getting a lot of catches, a lot of targets. No, uh, j- just for reference, I mean, looking at a a, a Super Bowl contending team from last year, uh, Mark Andrews, pretty good tight end, played eleven games and he had five hundred and fifty nine receiving yards. Eleven games. And then what's the yeah. other tight end? Because I know they got another Isaiah tight end. Likely. Isaiah Likely, yeah. he came around, and he had 461 yards. Both of them combined. That's 1,000 yards. Both oh, of them combined over 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns. Use your tight ends. And, and I feel like this – Bo Nix is a guy who will use tight end. He used tight ends at Oregon very consistently. Um, yeah. I, I think that this, is, this could be a good spot. If Bo Nix is the starter – going into week one, I'll feel a little more confident in him and our ability to use tight ends in this offense, but I won't feel great about the quality of the tight ends in this offense. So I think that you're absolutely right. Number one target next year, uh, you know, for the offense is probably going to be a pass catching tight end or a complete tight end. And there's going to be plenty out there in this draft class. There's going to be some good ones, especially a guy like Luke Lachey from yeah, you guessed it, Iowa. Um, Chris, one more last thing, thing, one more thing. Yeah, go one for more. it. Let's give and let's let's give the let's try to like play like let's give the tight ends a benefit of doubt, right? I've never seen Russell Wilson have a leading tight end receiver. I've never known him to be Talk a guy him. that that Luke feeds Wilson the tight ends in. from just playing them, right? No. So I was, I, I was, I'm going to give the tight ends a benefit of doubt under Russell Wilson. Yeah. We're going to give y'all a new scratch, clean, yeah. slate, clean slate with, with Bo Nix. And let's see what y'all can do this year, right? You, because I've never known Russell to throw to his tight ends. Mm-hmm. Do you remember when Jimmy Graham got traded to Seattle? Do you remember that? It, that yeah, was like... That was uh, that was interesting because before that, Russ didn't generally use tight end, and they like force fed Jimmy Graham, uh, and, and it just didn't work. It didn't work for whatever reason. Um, but they force fed him, and I I just feel like like for Russ being the quarterback that he was the last couple of seasons, um, and you know he. he uh, like he, it looked like he liked Dulcich a little bit in Dulcich's rookie year. That was someone that he could kind of rely on um, when yeah. Dulcich was healthy. But like outside of that, the tight end usage was pretty much non-existent. Um, so yeah. I, I'm kind of interested to see the change. And, and I think you're right. Let's give him a clean slate. Bo is going to be a different quarterback than Russell Wilson. Uh, so maybe he'll utilize tight ends in the NFL the same way that he utilized tight ends Um you know, in the college game, but yeah. now it's like, what, you know, what are we going to get from this tight end group? Um, so let me ask you this. Uh, mm-hmm. What do you think? Um, what do you think the best scenario is for this tight end group? Uh, like, what would you say is a successful season for this tight end group numbers wise? 
Man, we got to get, I would say, 700, 600 yards. 200 yards is, like, that's really, really bad. I don't think people are, when y'all yeah. listen to this and y'all really understand, like, football, like, yeah, that's terrible awful. for a unit, right? Mm -hmm. And in today's NFL game where it's wide open and they're throwing the football all over the place, yeah. right? I guarantee, I'm positive that that's the lowest in the league, right? And I'm, that's probably the lowest right Sean Payton's. That's probably the lowest that Sean Payton's ever had in his career. Probably, probably one of his coaching coaching lows from the tight end position. So oh, my man. expectation is we need 600 to 700 yards, 10 touchdowns, right? If we can get that from from these guys, that's much improvement. Uh, I'll okay. be satisfied with that, right? But last last year's is just y'all were just out there, right, running for the love of the game, <laughs> and we can't have that. <laughs> We're going to clip that. Running for the love of the game. I love that. Uh, just for reference, Adam Troutman's 204 receiving yards, Chris, 45th in the league. 45th yeah. in, in the NFL. How many teams That's are there? 32. Uh, 32, 32 teams. teams. I, I mean, we're talking about guys like obviously, you know, George Kittle, Travis Kelsey, uh, TJ Hawkinson, those guys, you know, they're top. Evan Ingram was up there in yards as well. Um, but like, we're talking about guys like, uh, like Will Mallory, who is like the third or fourth tight end on, on the Indianapolis Colts, 207 yards. Um, Josh Oliver, a backup tight end in Minnesota, 213 yards. Austin Hooper, the journeyman himself, 234 yards last year with the, the Vegas Raiders. The, like this has to change and the tight end is yeah. such an important part of this offense i'll go back and look for our next show but i think you're right i think that this was the worst tight end performance by a sean payton led team in his career and that even extends to his days in dallas and his days in new york when they had decent tight you know they had decent tight ends back then but they were still giving those guys they were still a, a big part of the offense and I feel like last right. season, it, it just like all of the offensive woes because of the Russell Wilson, Sean Payton marriage. It just as a as a student of the game, as a fan of the game, as a coach of the game, I was like verbally and visually frustrated a lot of games with our lack of usage in tight ends. Why are we not doing more to get these guys involved in the game? Um, and maybe that's just because of the level of talent. Uh, but I think that this just means that, again, this is a position that needs to be addressed in the offseason. Um, but Sean Payton also had a really good uh, note in his press conference. Um, and we'll move on to special teams right after this. But he had a, he had a really good note um, when somebody asked about the tight end battle. And he pointed out that they're not just competing against other guys on the roster. It's not, it's not Dulcich competing against Adam Troutman. It's not Kroll competing against the other guys. They're competing against the rest of the league. When cuts happen, yeah. Sean Payton is waiting. Lucas Kroll was a, a preseason cut last year. They jumped on him. This is the guy that they yeah. brought in. So he makes a really good point. There could be a tight end somewhere else in the league who is, is stuck on a team and just can't break the the roster and gets cut. Broncos will bring him in. He's not afraid. They're to looking do that. for him. Yeah, they're looking absolutely. for him. They're looking I'm, right now. Sean Payton is looking at every team. Mm -hmm. What tight end is on the bubble that yep. we can come pick up? Yeah. He's looking for. He's looking for that. If they're looking for any position, they're looking for a tight end right now. So yeah. you know, uh, once you, I can't wait for you to go back and look at the numbers. Mm -hmm. And uh, but that's what we got to need if we're gonna. If we're going to be a solid team, right, we need 10 touchdowns, at least 700 yards in the inside. Because yeah. when Sean Payton flourished, his offense, Drew Brees flourished, mm -hmm. he worked inside the numbers, right? And what I'm seeing yeah. in the NFL Imperial. is, and way Bo Nix is, he likes to work inside the numbers. So mm -hmm. we have to be able to mold the offense to be able to fit the way he likes to play. And that's mm -hmm. using the tight end. That's using Cortland in the slot and running those scenes like Colson, right? Yeah. That's using McLaughlin like Sproles, right? Mm -hmm. And like how like the Lions are using their three guys in the inside, what St. Brown, uh, Laporta. Is that you say his name? Laporta. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Laporta and Gibbs, right? Mm -hmm. They're working. Teams are working the inside of the field more. So yeah. we have to be able to do that um, and be able to fit um, Bo Nix's style play. And really yep. his style plays the same play. Sean Payton likes to run, you know? So yeah. we got it's important that we get a tight end that's reliable, especially across that middle. And I'm telling you right now, Chris, I'm looking at, you know, tight ends, uh, the tight end uh, depth charts from across the league. And, and there's already names that I'm like, uh, oh, I'll keep an eye on this one. Uh, so I'll, I'll throw some names out there for, mm -hmm. you know, for people to go look at. Right. Uh, yeah. So someone like uh, Tegan, uh, I, I'm going to mess this last name up, uh, but Tegan uh, Quitoriano, Quitoriano, he was a, a fifth round draft pick in 2022 out of Oregon State, plays for the Texans right now. He's currently fourth on the depth chart. That's a guy that I would keep my eye on. He is yeah. solid. He was really, really solid. Um, uh, you know, I, I would look at um, I would look at a, a team like Baltimore, maybe, who's got Charlie Kohler uh, as a as the third tight end. Connor Hayward in Pittsburgh, he's the third tight end. Wouldn't mind having, you know, any of those. Will Mallory. That would be a nice pickup right there. Will That'd Mallory be nice would be a, a fantastic pickup. Like, there's yeah. guys out there, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you that Sean Payton is just watching those cut lists. He's going to be yeah. watching them all the time. Um, Don't Donald be surprised Parton. if we bring in two guys. Don't be surprised, yeah. fans. We bring in two new guys after uh, preseason. Mm -hmm. uh, Donald Parham Jr., I, I don't know if you saw the – Donald proposed. Parham's out there too? Hey, he's he's currently third on the Chargers depth chart, and but I don't really see him fitting Harbaugh's system. They're not what he him. wants to do. I, but They're will he him. will he fit their system? So there was the the trade that came out was like yeah. a three way trade uh, between the Chargers, Niners, and Broncos, which I would I don't think that would ever happen. But you never know. Uh, so basically, it was the Broncos get Parham, uh, the Chargers get uh Ayuk and then the Niners get Cortland Sutton. That was the trade. And I was like, uh, I don't it's know about even. that. We better get but, some first round picks with that. <laughs> but par if Parham is if they do move on from Parham, which it depends on what Harbaugh's looking for, because he does have a type. And I mean he brought in Will Disley and Hayden Hurst to be yeah. those tight ends. That kind of that kind of tells you what he's looking for. If Donald Parham's one of those dudes that gets cut I'm right away, right away. Bring Neither. him in. That's a dude I would absolutely love. Uh, Chris, we've been yapping about tight ends for too long. We didn't get to special teams, so here we go. We're going to cover special teams super quick. This Broncos special teams group, Chris, abysmal in 2022. Got really, really good last year uh, under Sean yeah. Payton. How? Two questions, and, and these are the only questions that we're going to have for the special teams as a whole. Uh, one, how does this team continue to get better at yeah. special teams? And two, who is going to be the guy to replace Drew Sanders on special teams? Because he played the fourth most snaps on special teams, yeah. 295 snaps last year, and he is out for the season. Um, how do they get better, and who's going to replace Drew? Well, I was counting on somebody having to replace Drew anyways because I had him. He was going to be my yeah. starting linebacker anyway. So, you know, you can probably cut those special teams probably down 100, you know, with him playing more on defense. But uh, Griffin, we know we got to rely on him mm -hmm. uh, definitely to step up and play a lot, play special teams. Uh, we picked up the guy linebacker from the Falcons. Um, you know, he was a special teams guru. Uh, is the last name Smith? Andre Smith, Smith. Yeah. 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 So uh, he's, a, he's a, a special teams guru. And, you know, um, some of these receivers, you know, they're going to have to step up and fill in. A lot of guys on the defensive side, are, they, they're they back uh, on the special team. So I think the special teams will be good because a lot of the same guys that played last year are going to play it again this year, yeah. right, unless they get elevated to another role. And right now, a lot of those guys are kind of stuck in the special teams role right now. So mm -hmm. I see the special teams uh, continue to improve. Returners were great. You know, yeah. we had great returns Solid. last year. Punt return was team was great. Kick return team was great. Mm -hmm. uh, Mims made I think probably muffed probably like two, two yeah two probably. or three. I think two yeah. or three. Rookie, rookie mistakes. Up. Yeah, 
yeah. that's something that he can clean up and improve. Uh, but the kickers, you know, um, that uh, it's gonna be, you know, they always bring in extra kickers, extra yeah. punters, you know, for some competition, just mm-hmm. to keep them on their toes, you know, keep Riley on his toes, you know, and <laughs> let them know, hey man, we got this other guy that's he can punt too. So you know, yep. they always keep those guys kind of keep those guys sharp, have a little camp competition. But I see us rolling with the same kicker and same punter, um, at sprinkling in some of the new guys on special teams. But I'm not. This is the the last group that I'm worried about is our special teams group. I think they'll they continue so to improve, and I think um, you know they 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 block on the Pro Bowl level, man. I mean, Mims. A lot of times he didn't have to make a lot of shakes. You know, he was bam bam one cut. And he hit it. It was yeah. a wide open lane. So you got to give these guys credit on special teams the way they play. Yeah, and with the the adjustment to the different uh, kickoff rule, this is going to be pretty interesting to see how the blocking scheme works. Um, you know, Sean Payton and, and uh, Ben Kotwicka, you know, they, they've they've yeah. been talking about all all off season, testing new things, seeing where you know what they can do scheme wise because this is this new kickoff. It, it's going to be different for a lot of fans, and I like I really advise all of you who are watching or listening, go watch the, the XFL and the, and the UFL from this last season. Well, not from this last season, because they reverted back to old kickoff. But um, go watch I don't watch know why that. they changed that. I, I don't know why they did either. But sure. I think it's... Hopefully it's it, one and done. <laughs> to, I, I think it's going to be... It's going to be interesting, because you'll probably see more explosive plays, more explosive plays, less injuries... Um, but it's still kind of keeping the kick, like the tradition of kickoff, right? You want to push, uh, you want to push, they're trying to push offense. So penalize the kickers for kicking it into the end zone, which Won't they sure, just push in- the kickers back? Won't they just push the, everybody back? Push the kickers you back know? 10 more yards and then yeah. keep, the, keep the coverage guys where they're at. Um, but yeah. the Broncos last season, Special, they were the 11th best special teams graded team per PFF. Um, and Chris, to your point about Andre Smith, two times this guy has played less than 200 special team snaps. Uh, that was in 2022 with Tennessee and then 2018 with Carolina. Everywhere else, he has played more than 200 special team snaps. So I can think, I think you're safe to league. say he's in the league because of special teams, he's yeah, good at he, special teams. He's a, a, a solid special teamer, um, and I think this is a good pickup for the Broncos. Uh, you did mention the, the punters. Uh, quick note on that. The Broncos do have two punters on this roster, Riley Dixon and Trenton Gill. Riley Dixon was really good last year, though. All yeah. things considered, uh, he was 14th in the league in return percentage. Gill was 19th. Um, Riley Dixon was second in the league in yards per return. Uh, Gill was 31st. Um, five touchbacks for Riley Dixon. He was 20th in the league. Uh, Gill had eight touchbacks, uh, tied for 25th. The only thing that they're really close in, Chris, uh, Trenton Gill has a 4.28 hang time. Riley Dixon has a 4.29. So I think it's just, it's just camp competition. (laughs) Keep two on the roster. Um, but I think Riley Dixon is going to be the guy. So Chris, we finished these episodes. Uh, we've been building slowly building our Broncos roster, our our own 53-man roster, and we'll talk about that in the next episode um, when we get into camp. But who, A, who are your four tight ends? Um, and I think we know who the special teamers are. But who are your four tight ends? I'm going to go – I'm going to go with two. Two. And we're going to pick two new ones. Okay. Actually, I'm going to go with three. I'm going to go to the safe side. Okay. I'm going to the safe side. Let's do it. I'm going to pick three. And we're gonna yeah. pick a new free agent from uh oh. from the preseason cuts or okay, okay. bubble cut. I like roster that. Cut thing like that. So okay. I'm gonna go with Childman because we nice. know that he has the most security. Mm-hmm. Right. Um Dolchich, because they they're gonna give they're gonna give this guy so many chances because you know uh they he's a draft pick. Right yeah. when you draft a guy, and um, so you you gotta you gotta extend as many chances as you can. Sure. Right. So I'm gonna go with Dolchich, and now I'm gonna go mm-hmm. with Lucas Crow, right? Because he's a, he's a mix in between. He can play receiver and he can block. So mm-hmm. he's our he's not kind of guy that can do both. And yeah. then it's gonna be a free agent, right? Mm-hmm. It's gonna be some guy that's he's had production in the league, 
-hmm. but he's just uh he was a bubble cut maybe a you know a salary cap cut mm -hmm. and a late cut that he's gonna find his way on our team so that, that those will be my four guys i like it yeah i'm gonna go with uh so i'm gonna go troutman obviously um i, I think kroll makes the roster as well uh you don't like the Dolphins. Oh, man, it's so that's so, it's so difficult because I want to. I really, really want to. It's just like, is he is he even going to be healthy uh, by the time? Can he make it through training camp? Yeah. So it, I, I'll say Dulcich for now, um, but I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to go in a different direction, and this one's I, I'm going to give you two different ones. A Johnny Munt who played with the Rams uh, and he played, he's on the Vikings right now, but they, they've got a really deep, I mean, TJ Hawkinson's going to be on pup, but Josh Oliver, Robert Tunyon, Nikhil Harry, Trey Knox, they just uh, got him. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think Johnny Munt could be a cut also an Oregon duck. Um, and then, you know what? Taysom Hill. Don't be surprised if it happens. Taysom Hill, if he gets cut, cause they just drafted or uh, they signed, Dallin Holker out of Colorado State, the Saints did. Don't be surprised if Taysom Hill gets cut, and then he mm. ends up as the Denver Bronco. I, I'm just going to throw it out there. It's not what well, I want, but I won't be perfect. surprised. I would want that. That's what I would I, want. <laughs> I, I think it would fit. Hey, that yeah. that that replaces our Zach Wilson theory from the last episode. Um, yeah. But this is also a guy that could play special teams. So I think it. You know, it's not terrible. Just at what cost? Yeah. Um, so that has been our roster breakdown series. We're done. Chris camp is here. I'm so excited. Our next episode, uh, we're going to be talking about the recaps from these first few days of camp. We're going to be talking about who stood out, who is getting a little bit colder. I've, I've heard some good things about Javante Williams. All I'm going to say, I'm pretty yeah. excited. Um, make sure that you follow Chris and I on Twitter at Chris Harris Jr. at Patrick Chiodi. Follow at Believe Network as well. Make sure that you subscribe to the show on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on and go ahead and go to the YouTube. Follow us over there as well. You can find this whole series uh, on the YouTube channel. It's really great. Had lots of great guests. Uh, Chris, next week, we've got a big guest. Um, yeah. What, my, my childhood quarterback, Jake Plummer. He's going to be coming yes, on hey. the show. Jake the Snake. Love Jake. I'm really excited. Uh, Chris, Jake, any closing thoughts? Man. Oh, no, man. Like you said, man, it was fun going through the uh, positional breakdown and um, giving the fans, you know, insight of what we think, how the roster is going to shape out and how this – what what's our expectations from each guy. So I think it's a great guide, man. I think – shout out to the fans and all the listeners. Make sure y'all tune yeah. in. and This should be a good guide for you going into the season and going into the training camp to uh, really see where this team's at. Very exciting. Uh, for Chris, for all of us here, thank you so much. Go Broncos.